Hi people, welcome to my channel. I am going to talk about a question in this video which has been asked to me more than thousand times in a month. So uh, if I uh, make a list of all the questions that students ask me, I think this would be the question which would be at the top. So there have been students asking me that ma'am, we've never studied research methodology and it doesn't make sense to us. Can we skip it? Then there's another student who is going to ask me next day that ma'am, we are not good with DI and reasoning. Can we skip that? Then there's a person who says that ma'am, I am seriously uh, very bad and pathetic at general knowledge. I have no clue about government policies, about uh, all these new legislative uh, bills that are coming up. So can I skip that? Then there's another person who comes up and asks me that ma'am, uh, you know, when it comes to mathematics, I've been always a very weak student. So ma'am, uh, in paper one, there is DI and mathematical reasoning. Can I skip that? And for each and every unit, students come up and ask me this question. So I thought of making a video where I can give you an answer which can satisfy almost everyone. Now I know that there are areas of interest. Some people are not good with uh, numbers, some are not good with theoretical data. So we all have our own preferences and we get really panicked when we uh, see that there's a section in the paper which we have to study of an area which we are not good at. I can understand and I can feel you because the same questions popped up in my head when I was preparing for UGC net but I had nobody to go and ask this question so now that you have somebody you can go and ask to I would really respect that feeling and would like to talk about this question in detail in this video but before I move on I would also like to tell you that sometimes it's not only about our preference about our interest there are people who are doing their job or who are doing their masters and simultaneously preparing for this exam. They have a time crunch. They, they hardly get two hours every day to prepare. And they really want to know what can be the uh, most important topics that we can study in that limited time we have. And if we prepare those topics, there should be a significant chance that we'll, uh, we'll clear this exam. And I have respect for all these people who are trying to balance out two or three things in their life. So taking in consideration all these factors, I'm going to give you my take on the most important topics. Also, I'm going to answer and demystify few points which might be there in your head relating uh, paper one. And number three, I'm going to talk about the topics or subtopics which you can skip altogether and can be relieved and only focus your energy on the areas which might sound easy for you. So let's get started. Before I give you the list of most important topics and the topics which you can skip, I would like to talk about three very simple facts. The first fact, when people ask me that which is the most important module in paper one, I want to tell you very clearly that from each unit, there are five questions which are asked. So every unit has equal weightage. There is no important unit for that matter. So even if you want to skip three units, you can decide and choose whichever you want. You don't have to think that, okay, I should skip these three units or I should skip these three units. That should be entirely based on your preference. Though I'm going to give you a very simple technique which will help you to choose which units to skip, but before that, let me very simply clarify that all units have equal weightage and equal number of questions are asked from each unit. So no unit is superior and no unit is inferior. Second important fact that when it comes to UGC net paper one, never be extremely uh, you know, uh, unrealistic. Some people say that we want to score 50 on 50 in paper one. Let me tell you guys, it's not possible. The paper is designed in a manner that a person who is uh, who has studied for it can score somewhere around 40 to 45, but nobody can score 50 on 50. That would be too much uh, effort that you're trying to make and it might not give you the results that you're seeking. So decent score for paper one would vary around 30 to 35 questions correct out of 50. So you get 50 questions. If you are able to answer 30 to 35 questions correctly, that means you're scoring pretty well in paper one and you can now focus your energy on paper two because it's a cumulative 
uh, marks of both these papers that is going to define whether you qualify net or not. So don't put too much effort in paper one. Paper one can be tackled very smartly, which I'm going to talk about in this video. But make sure that your score ranges around 30 to 25 questions out of 50. The third important fact that you must remember in your head is that there are certain very easy sections. For example, reading comprehension, teaching aptitude and communication. These three, according to me, are the most basic common sense based um, units where anybody can score. You just have to brush up on certain things and you are sorted for these three topics. I would also include computers in that, but then I know that some people have no connection with computers. So for them, it might be a little too much. So according to me, every person on this earth who has passed their graduation or who, are, uh, who have done their 12th standard as in this higher secondary education can very simply attempt reading comprehension if they know where they make mistakes and if they keep those mistakes in mind. Also, teaching aptitude is a very common sense based area. Okay, and communication also. So there are things like messenger, receiver, sender, which are very basic terminology we use in our day to day life. So I think that these three topics should never be skipped. These three units should never be skipped. These should be the uh, most simplest yet the most crucial uh, units, which can give you those 15 marks. Okay, those 15 questions you can simply get right if you know how to use your common sense. So these three things you should keep in mind. Number one, never think that some units are more important than the other. Number two, never be too much over ambitious. Make sure that your score ranges somewhere around 30 to 35 and be happy with that score. If you are getting mass marks less than 30 out of 50, then in that case, you should do a little more effort. If you're getting somewhere around 30 to 35, it's a pretty decent score. And number three, never skip these three units because these are the most basic and common sense based units. Now, finally, we move on to the other aspects, other units, which you will see in UGC Net Paper 1. So I've divided them in two categories. The first one is theoretical section. For example, it is going to include topics like uh, people and environment, government and policy, computers and research methodology. On the other side, we have practical portions, which would include topics like mathematical reasoning, logical reasoning, data interpretation. Cool. Now, I would like to tell you very basic thing about all these topics be it theoretical or practical, when we first see a question of uh, these topics, we might get very perplexed. We find that it's very difficult. The same thought was there in my mind when I first saw the paper and these uh, units specifically. But let me tell you that there's a code that you have to crack. If you look at the previous year papers, you will find out that they ask repeated questions from these sections. So there are topics, subtopics, in each of these units from which they are going to ask questions. They are going to twist and turn the question, change the values and ask you the same question. So if you focus all your time and energy in understanding those subtopics and preparing them at your best, you can very easily get those marks. So never think that these topics are difficult. And also my recommendation would be that if you find a topic difficult, it's better to either watch a video or listen to somebody explaining it rather than reading it from a book. Because if we are finding difficulty in a topic, we can never understand it just by reading something. We want somebody to practically explain it to us. So for example, square of opposition is a topic that you will find in reasoning. Now this square of opposition topic, uh, you can study from YouTube very easily. There are more than 100 videos of different educators explaining you square of opposition because it's a topic which comes in every competitive exam. So if you watch three or four videos, you will automatically understand what this topic is all about and then you can practice a few questions. This is a way you have to tackle topics which doesn't make sense to you when you read it from a book. So my suggestion to you would be that never think a topic is difficult. Just try to 
ensure that you watch relevant video or you take up a course from which you where you can understand the topic and then solve few practice questions when you make a mistake in the practice question make sure you note down the error you are making and then rectify it and then try to again solve the same question if you follow this method very simply you can master these topics let me tell you very frankly that the level of paper one is way less then the level you are going to expect in other competitive exams like UPSC or bank or SSC. All these exams have a really tough level when it comes to basic aptitude questions. Whereas uh, we are very lucky that UGC net doesn't have that level. They ask very basic and simple questions which you can answer if you have basic knowledge about these topics. But Still, you might ask us the same question that which are the topics we can skip. So let me give you two approach. We have theoretical and practical portions. Now, there can be people who are very good at theory or there can be people who are very good at practical. Either uh, if you look at uh, each of us, you will find out that everybody has their own uh, strong points. So somebody can be very good with numbers. So if a person is very good with numbers, I would suggest you to put efforts and make sure you don't neglect the uh, practical portion. You do those uh, questions very, very keenly and very sincerely. So you should do your mastery over the practical portion and you can skip the theoretical portion if you want because overall score that you want and you are aiming at is 30 to 35. So 12 questions or 15 questions you can get right from the three sections I've already told you. The easy ones, reading comprehension, teaching and communication. Rest 15 questions, try to get it right from the practical portion and then from theory you can just do a guesswork and get a few uh, of them right. People who are not good at practical, I'm sure you're very good at theory because it's about left and right brain. People uh, can either be good at left or right brain. Some people are good at both of them. So if you are not good with uh, practical, I'm sure you're good with mugging up theory. In that case, pick up a book and try to understand and associate all the theoretical portions very well in your brain. Also, this is all or none approach. Either you do a unit or you skip it altogether. This is first approach. The second approach that you can take is you go through all these units, you figure out a list of subtopics from which questions are asked, then you pick and choose few subtopics from each of these portions which seem easy to you. For example, I might not be good at reasoning but blood relations and directions are two areas uh, in which I can easily get marks. I'm good at understanding these concepts. So I might pick and choose these two topics and I might skip all the other ones. For example, permutation and combination I can skip or maybe Indian logic I can skip. I can pick and choose a few topics from them. Similarly, I might not be good at DI, but I can try to be good at a few concepts of DI, basic concepts like growth rate. I can understand and learn the formula and I can use it if the digits are smaller. So this is how you can use and you can do few topics from each of these units and you don't leave any of these units altogether. So two approaches that I've given you, either you do few units and uh, you know skip few units altogether. Okay, this is all or none approach. Another approach is you do few topics from each of these units and you skip the other few topics. So in that case, you get an overall idea of all these units. Also, it might not seem too heavy on you because you are only picking and choosing topics which are easy. So out of five questions, they make sure that two or three are easy. One is average and one is uh, above average or difficult. So you can skip the difficult ones. You can only try and do the easy one. So in that case also you get two marks for two questions right from each of these units or else you can do three units completely or four units completely and leave any three units. So either ways you can start your preparation and I'm sure that you are going to rock this uh, exam. So with all my best wishes and regards, that's it for this video lecture. We'll meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com.